I've been working as a corrections officer at the New Hampshire State Prison. Yeah, working in the maximum security unit, specifically guys that are there basically for life. Um, you have your murderers, rapists, robbers, uh, people that are there for minimum of like 100 years plus look inside the cells and I see myself, I'm like, I couldn't imagine being here not even one night. There are guys that have been in there 50 plus years without seeing a day outside. It's one of the darkest places you could be. You see evil everywhere. You can just feel the heaviness inside of that place. And inside you can see in the cell that they have um, evil scriptures written on the walls. Things like suicide is escape. Uh, you know, things written in blood, they, they, they cut themselves on the daily and they write uh, evil demonic things in blood on the walls and it's all over the place. I've received many threats before, um, recently even death threats. Um, and it's it just comes with the job. And it's it's not just threats because, you know, you're, you're walking in a prison where inmates are free to walk around and, you know, sometimes you're in units where you have 50, 60 guys and you're walking in that unit and they're all around you, walking freely, um, walking behind you and you never know what can happen and anybody can be upset and react a certain way and take a shank and, and stab you with it um, you you're you're open to that it's it's a it's an open unit so when I first started there I wasn't really going to church I wasn't serving God the way I was supposed to I was just living my life the way that I wanted and being there just made me more of an angry person these guys live every day trying to manipulate you and trying to trigger you, trying to get you to act a certain way, trying to get you to lose your job. Um, at points there, without God in my life, I was just reacting to those moments. And so I, w I would retaliate in a way where if they threatened me, I would threaten them. Where it shifted for me is at one point, you know, God came back into my life and opened my eyes to a different viewpoint. I bought a Bible and started reading it. And um, through, the, through the text in the Bible and the word, he started speaking to my heart and opening it up and making me realize that I wasn't just there to go by and get a paycheck. He had a bigger purpose for my life. And he knew uh, me being a person that loves helping people, this is the opportunity, this is the perfect place for that. You have people who are hopeless, who see no way out. And those people need hope spoken into their lives. He started speaking to me and I started praying. I took some shifts overnight and I would go into like the tower or somewhere where I was secluded and I'd get on my knees and I'd pray and I'd tell God like, um, you know, you have me here for a reason. Uh, tell me what I need to do. Show me the way. Give me a sign, something that I know that comes from you. Um, as soon as I prayed for that, like all these moments started coming up with inmates, opportunities to talk to them, uh, moments where I could feel it inside of me like this is the moment right here. Speak to this this inmate. He, he, needs, he needs your words. And um, it's, it's become amazing. I had an inmate who was a worker for me in the unit. He has two life sentences. Uh, he murdered two, two men. At that moment, I'm standing there and he's taking his meds and he's telling the nurse, I need to see a mental health counselor because I'm starting to feel like I'm, I'm seeing things. Like there's a shadow that's following me and that, that, wants, to, that wants me to hurt myself. And, that wants me to do all these bad things and I just, I don't know, I'm struggling. At that moment, I could feel that God speaking to me and telling me like, you need, you, need to, you need to speak to him, you need to tell him that, regardless of what he's done in his life, that I love him and that I care about him and that I want him back. At that moment, I'm fighting with myself. I'm like, there's no way, like, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, you know, I got a job to do. So I start walking away and the nurse ends up leaving and I'm walking to go to my office and some hits me again like, turn around, go over there, tell him what I told you to tell him. At that moment, I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna ignore your word. <laughs> Turned around, I went over to him. I knocked on his cell door. I asked him if he was religious at all and he said that he did, he did go to church a long time ago, back in the day, and he ended up leaving and leaving the church and leaving everybody and uh, cut communications off with his families and hadn't spoke to his family in years. But um, at that moment, I, I told him, well, you know, I'm, I'm here to tell you because God sent me here to tell you. He told me that no matter what you've done, no matter what you've felt about yourself in your life, that he loves you and that he will always love you and he will always wait for you to come back. And at that moment, uh, that inmate just 
fell into tears, just broke down and crying and telling me, um, you have no idea how bad I needed to hear that. I felt like I couldn't be loved in that in that place, so I left the church and um, and I and I stopped serving God and I went into the world and I did my own thing. And I said, well, it doesn't matter what your family thinks. At the end of the day, it's, it matters what God thinks. And God's telling me that He loves you. He goes, I'm gonna go in my cell right now and I'm gonna get on my knees and I'm gonna pray. And after our conversation, directly into his cell, got on his knees, he started praying. Um, and that that changed that changed a lot for him. Uh, you know, next day I, I saw him and he was a whole different person. Uh, walking through the unit, working, and you can hear through his radio, you can hear him listening to worship music. It's out loud, you can hear through the whole unit, telling me how grateful he is that, uh, that I spoke those words into his life. Sits in a cell, he reads his Bible, and he continues on. And he's in there for life, <laughs> but he's gonna do a lot of different things in there. You know, God showed me that could be done. Just open, open my eyes to much more. It's like, this is only the beginning of something that I could do, and it's not just in here. The, the very important in here because a place like this needs so much light and so much, uh, so much of Jesus. Um, but if I'm able to do this in such a small area, I can only imagine if I if I open myself up to do more outside in the world because there's more for me to do. Recently, I had probably the most serious threat I've ever received um, to not only me but my family and. Um, you know, I could have reacted any other way that I wanted to as, as I did before and threat back, so, you know. But instead, I I felt sad for the guy. I still prayed for the guy. I, I asked God to like, reveal yourself to him. Show him who you are and that you're a lot more powerful than, than Satan is, um, no matter what Satan may do. He's in a tough situation and for that I understand why he is the way he is and why he acts the way he acts and the threats. It's more like, you know, he's, he's crying for help and you know that the devil is out there and he has people in binds. At the end of the day, I I know that God protects me in there and I know that God, God protects my family while I'm in there. If, if I'm willing and I'm open, God just wants to speak through me to, to people. You know, give hope to the hopeless and love to those that need it. There's a lot of people that don't feel love, whether it's from their families or anything. And that love of Jesus can fill a whole lot in a big void that maybe they've been missing forever.